Welcome back to Explaining Everything, the channel where we dive into the stories and mysteries behind everyday things. Today's question comes from one of our curious viewers, Arjun Sharma, GU5EH. Thanks for the suggestion, Arjun Sharma. You asked, where does mercury metal come from? Mercury is one of the weirdest metals around. It's shiny, it's heavy, and unlike pretty much every other metal, it's liquid at room temperature. It's like the rebel kid in the periodic table that refuses to follow the rules. But how do we get it? Where does it actually come from? Let's dive deep into the strange journey of mercury metal, right here on Explaining Everything. If you want mercury, you don't just stick a bucket under a mercury tree and wait for the silver goo to drip out. No, mercury comes from a rock, specifically a rock called cinnabar. Cinnabar looks nothing like the shiny silver liquid we imagine. Instead, it's bright red, like someone ground up a stop sign and turned it into a crystal. For centuries, people were fascinated by cinnabar because not only did it make a fantastic red pigment, but it also held a strange, silvery secret. Mercury metal. Think of cinnabar as the pinata of the mineral world. You don't just admire it, you smash it open and hope something weird falls out. Inside that vivid red rock is mercury sulfide, which is basically mercury atoms locked in a sulfur cage. And just like freeing a genie from a lamp, humans figured out how to break that cage open. Spoiler, it involves fire. So, how do you turn cinnabar into mercury? Simple, you cook it, and not just on a backyard barbecue. Ancient miners figured out that if you roast cinnabar in a hot furnace, the sulfur combines with oxygen to make sulfur dioxide gas. And what's left behind is mercury vapor. Yes, vapor. Meaning, if you're standing next to that furnace without a mask, congratulations, you're now breathing in toxic mercury fumes. Not the greatest way to live to retirement age. But once the vapor cools, it condenses into tiny silver droplets. Collect enough of those droplets, and boom, you've got liquid mercury. It's basically metal that sweats itself out of rocks. Imagine a stone exhaling and leaving behind shiny puddles. Creepy, but also kind of magical. Of course, ancient civilizations didn't exactly worry about workplace safety. The Romans, for instance, had whole operations where slaves roasted cinnabar and skimmed off mercury. And, well, let's just say you wouldn't find any employee of the month plaques in those mines. Okay, so cinnabar is the source, but where do you actually find it? Turns out, mercury doesn't hang out just anywhere. The best deposits are found in specific geological zones, where hot fluids from deep underground once circulated, leaving behind veins of cinnabar. One of the most famous spots is Almaden, Spain, which became the ultimate mercury hotspot. For over 2,000 years, people dug cinnabar there, making Almaden basically the world's mercury capital. If you wanted mercury back in the day, odds are it passed through Spain first. Other major sources popped up in Italy, Slovenia, Peru, Mexico, and later California. Yep, the California gold rush wasn't just about gold. Mercury was a side hustle too, since it played a role in separating gold from ore. Though miners didn't realize they were also separating their lungs from long-term health. Nature itself sometimes shows off mercury without human help. In rare cases, you can find tiny droplets of native mercury seeping out of rocks or soil. Imagine hiking, spotting a shiny bead of liquid metal in the dirt, and thinking, huh? 
free mercury. Except you probably shouldn't pick it up, unless you enjoy glowing in the dark, metaphorically. Now, why is mercury also called quicksilver? Well, quick in Old English didn't mean fast. It meant alive. So quicksilver literally meant living silver. And you can see why. Liquid mercury moves and sloshes around like it has a mind of its own. People were mesmerized by it. Imagine living in the ancient world, seeing this strange silver liquid bead up and roll across the table. It looked like magic. No wonder alchemists thought mercury was a mystical substance that could maybe, just maybe, help them turn lead into gold. Spoiler, it didn't. Of course, fascination came with a price. Mining it, roasting it, even just handling it was hazardous. Entire towns near mercury mines ended up dealing with poisoned air, contaminated soil, and way too many health problems. You could say mercury gave people a liquid silver lining, but one that came with a dark, toxic cloud. Mercury Story is a reminder that the Earth hides some bizarre treasures, and humans have never been able to resist cracking open the piñata, no matter the risk. From shiny red rocks to mysterious pools of liquid metal, Mercury's journey is as strange and slippery as the element itself. It dazzled people for centuries, but it also came with a hidden price. That mix of wonder and danger is exactly why Mercury's origin story still feels so fascinating today. So the next time you see that silvery liquid in a science video, or hopefully not leaking out of a thermometer, you'll know it started with fiery rocks, ancient furnaces, and a very risky treasure hunt. If you learn something new about one of the most fascinating element in our world, don't forget to like, subscribe, and even though it's very tempting to play with it, always remember, don't. Also, if you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for tuning in and join us next time here in the channel that answers all the why, what, who, where and how questions you've always wondered about here on Explaining Everything.